Good morning and welcome. As you start filing in, we'll begin our session here in a couple of minutes. Uh, welcome to the National Ag in the Classroom virtual conference. We're happy you're here. Well, good morning. We've got almost 100 of you uh, joined in already. Uh, welcome to the virtual National Agriculture in the Classroom Conference. As more people make their way in, we'll begin in just a couple of minutes. And again, good morning. We've got, um, uh, you aren't supposed to see other participants. Right now, you should just be seeing our panel. This is a webinar. So welcome to the National Agriculture in the Classroom conference, our virtual conference. We're glad that you could be with us. We'll get started in just another minute or so. Uh, we're letting some more people come in bright and early. Well, and Michelle and team, uh, in sticking with the time, I think we're going to go ahead and get started, if that's okay with you. Uh, we might have some more folks join in. But uh, on behalf of the National Agriculture in the Classroom Conference, welcome. My name is Kevin Darty. I am the state contact for Illinois, and I serve as the president-elect of the National Agriculture in the Classroom Organization. Joining us today, we have our executive director of the National Ag in the Classroom Organization, Andy Guffey. Also behind the scenes, Tessa Matuzak, our program director, and Michelle Blodgett. She is the virtual conference chairperson from Michigan. We are so excited that you could join us today. Our virtual conference is sponsored by BASF, the CHS Foundation, and Corteva AgriScience. We are very grateful for the support of our sponsors and their continued support of ag literacy nationally and within our state programs. We're glad that you chose to be a part of this this morning and we encourage you to stay for each session. But remember the sessions are being recorded and will be available on the National Ag in the Classroom website in the next week or so. Give us some time. We got a lot of videos to render here. There are two sessions to this. Uh, first, we're gonna start off with AITC 101. We'll go into our keynote speaker, and then this will be the secondary tract. You did get an elementary tract Zoom link that will be transitioning uh, a little bit later. We'll have an elementary tract and a secondary tract. During the session, during the session, um, uh, listeners will be able to use the Q&A feature as well as um, your host. I'll be working to relay these questions to the presenter. So if you find that Q&A function, the Q&A function, that's how you're going to ask questions. Please follow up with the National Ag in the Classroom program later as we ask for an evaluation on the program. And uh, again, we encourage you to reach out to your state programs as well. Um, you, you will see, uh, if you've been following our social media, conference registration and um, uh, uh, presentation. Uh, we're looking for presentations for our next live in-person meeting, which will be in Salt Lake City next June of 2024. But without further ado, let's take you to the great Beehive State. Right now, our first session is AITC 101, and it's a highlight it's a highlight of the National Agriculture in the Classroom materials. 
with our with our support from the NCAL, the National Center for Ag Literacy. With us today, we have Dr. Michelle Burrows, and Michelle is now a full month on the job. Congratulations. No, uh, yeah, a full month on the uh, job. Two weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> two weeks on the job as the director of the National Center for Ag Literacy. She's previ She was previously a high school ag and natural resources teacher, and now is the assistant professor in ag ed at the U Utah State University. She is the director of the Center for Ag Literacy, and her research focuses on ag literacy and socioscience issues in K-12 education. Joining her today are other members of the National Center for Ag Literacy team, Lynn Wallen, Alicia Hill, and Andrea Gardner. We are so excited to have these folks join us to highlight what you have access to. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Burrow and the team from NCAL. Thanks for joining us. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for having us. Uh, it's very nice to be here this morning. Uh, as Kevin said, we are with the National Center for Agricultural Literacy, which is housed at Utah State University. Uh, we work with the National Ag in the Classroom and support Ag in the Classroom programs across um, all states, all 50 states and territories, uh, in addition to curating uh, lessons for uh, all teachers and volunteers. Um, <clears throat> all of our resources uh, that are on the curriculum matrix that we're gonna go over today are available to teachers for free. Um, before I get into that though, I will introduce the team so that you can put uh, some faces with some names. As Kevin said, uh, my name is Michelle Burrows. Uh, and then we have Andrea and Lynn. They're going to speak a little bit later. Uh, and then I believe they also have sessions today. Uh, Andrea is our secondary education uh, curriculum specialist and Lynn is our elementary education specialist. Uh, also on our team is Yasuko, Yasuko Gro, who is our web and graphic designer. So anything that happens with the website, uh, she's the guru. We have Alicia Hill and <clears throat> Excuse me. She is the um, the Ag Classroom Store uh, guru. There, she is in charge of all the things related to the store. So, if you've ever interacted with the store, uh, you may have actually uh, emailed with her. We also have a research associate, Rose, Dr. Rose Judd Murray, who is here at Utah State, and she works with us in um, primarily in uh, agricultural literacy assessments. Uh, and we have a suite of those assessments that are available uh, in order to evaluate uh, students K through 12. And then uh, many of you may uh, know already know Dr. Deborah Spielmaker. She was previously the team leader, but she is sticking around and uh, she's going to be a consultant and all around Jedi Master of all things NCAL and Ag Literacy. So that's just a brief intro. Hopefully everyone else can introduce themselves a little bit more when uh, when they chat with you. So we, uh, as I mentioned, we develop, we, I say our team develops um, resources for K-12 uh, education using agriculture as a context to teach uh, standards, to teach two standards and different uh, content areas. So for example, math, uh, science, social studies, um, human geography, a whole host of content areas using agriculture as a context, helping students make that connection between those, um, between agriculture and, and the concepts that they're learning in their classes. Uh, as I mentioned before, we also uh, have uh, research associates and they help us in terms of evaluating uh, our resources and uh, evaluating agricultural literacy and, and measuring those. And then we also provide uh, professional development across uh, all the states and at, um, at the conferences, national conferences, and those are in person and online. So I'm going to jump into um, our resources. If you haven't been to the matrix, uh, a lot of folks, we refer to the matrix uh, and it's a curriculum matrix. Uh, everything is housed on the National Ag in the Classroom website. Uh, if you go to agclassroom.org, that will 
take you to the homepage where you can uh, find a whole host of resources there. If you would click on that for me, Lynn, and then click on the, yeah, there you go. Thank you. Um, and then I was just going to show, actually, if you go to the Nash up at the logo, yep, that'll take you to the homepage. So if you haven't been to the homepage, it's agclassroom.org and it um, you have access to um, the teacher center, the student center, uh, the store. There's a whole host of places um, on also my binder, which I'll mention uh, in just a minute. Uh, and then if you click on the curriculum matrix, so we have um, we have about 500 lessons in K through 12 um, grades, and our lessons are continually being updated. They, you know, statistics change, photographs change, links change. Um, there's a lot of different things that change. So um, the My Binder feature, that's, I was just going to mention that, the My Binder feature is a really helpful. If you log into My Binder and create one, you just you need to use your uh, email address and you can save any lessons that you um, any lessons that you have found in the matrix that you like that you want to come back to. Uh, and the nice thing about my binder is that they are updated. So if we update something in a lesson, uh, say a link or some statistics uh, or a learning activity, those will automatically be updated in your binder. So you don't have to worry about whether or not you have the, the latest version. Uh, I'm a paper person, uh, so I like to print them out. Uh, and so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll actually save them in my binder and I will still print them. But when I go to use them again later, I'll just make sure that I have the most uh, updated version printed out. So when you go to the curriculum matrix, there are a couple of things I want to point out right here. This is the search page. Um, we have, in addition to uh, the search page, you can see there's a matrix vocabulary link. And we have created a, a whole list of all of the vocabulary words in all of our lessons. And if you click on that, you can select all or you can choose your grade level that you're looking for, and then you can have that, that um, CSV file of all of those, um, those vocabulary words and the, uh, the definitions. And it's very helpful when you are using uh, multiple different lessons, uh, maybe even across some grade levels that you can keep your vocabulary consistent. Okay, so um, I just we just typed in a search word here, and you can type in anything um, specific that you're looking for. I just typed in climate change or climate, and then if you click the search button, it'll bring up a list of lesson plans and resources that we have available. You can see the different grade levels uh, and and some of those different topics. <clears throat> and then the resources there at the bottom. If you are, say, you're um, teaching secondary, I'm a former high school ag teacher, so I always go to secondary. Um, you can actually go to the advanced search on our on that page, right where you're at, and you can select um, different grade levels. Maybe it's a specific content area. Uh, and or maybe you're looking for a specific type of activity. So you can actually drill down that um, drill down that search a little bit better so that you don't have so many different lessons to uh, to look through. Uh, something that I have heard from a lot of different teachers though is often if a topic area really resonates with something that you're teaching and it maybe isn't quite your grade level, uh, I know us teachers are very good at adapting lessons. So uh, sometimes it's nice to look through those lessons, even if they aren't technically in your uh, grade level. Um, let's see. The other thing, if you wouldn't mind clicking on one of the lessons, Lynn, I was just going to go through some of the, and I'm sure that uh, Lynn and Andrea will talk a little bit about this uh, as when they 
talk about uh, elementary and secondary resources specifically, but I wanted to uh, kind of highlight some of the things that are specific in our lessons and the way they're set up. So we provide all the materials that are needed for all of the lessons. Uh, if it's a, a printout or an activity, there'll be a link that you can uh, either download a slideshow or click on a link to a video. Every single thing that you need is included in those and it's broken down by the activity. We also have uh, some vocabulary that might be specific to that particular lesson. And then uh, potentially some the, there's a did you know there, so some some uh, facts, quick facts. But uh, something that I find very helpful is the background. The background section is really nice. If this is maybe an area that is not in your wheelhouse, but you really want to teach your students about it, this background information is really helpful for teachers so that you can get uh, get comfortable with that topic area. So it gives you um, kind of a, an overview of all of the information that you need. Uh, and you can pull out specifically what's most important for you based on what you're going to cover in, in this lesson. And then as you move through, we use the 5E e model. So you'll see that everything is uh, identified as an engage, um, explore and explain, uh, et cetera. And so each of the different activities are uh, designed uh, within that model so that you can follow along. And again, you can see here the links to the videos um, that, that you'll use and how you will use those different resources within that lesson. And then towards the end, there are some elaborate and evaluate uh, options that you can incorporate into the lesson. Uh, some of them take things uh, deeper into a lesson that, that you can really uh, kind of take a deep dive into if you're interested. And then we have the sources where all of the information came from in that lesson. And then at the bottom, there are some companion resources, the recommended companion resources, if uh, there's a specific area that you want to focus on. And then the author who, who wrote the lessons. And then at the very bottom, <laughs> towards the end, uh, we have linked the, um, the lessons or we have identified the standards, the educational standards um, for that lesson. So all of the lessons are linked to the agriculture literacy outcomes, which are also, um, they are uh, a broad uh, standard for agriculture cultural literacy, but then we also have education content standards. So different topic areas or content areas like science or uh, geography, uh, potentially family consumer science, right? Those kinds of uh, our lessons will meet those standards as well. And then we have common core standards that we connect the lessons to. Now these, uh, in some in some cases, states, your individual state may also have the state uh, lessons or the state um, ag or the state standards uh, connected to these lessons as well. So that would show up uh, here. Something I, I um, wanted to make sure to mention is that all of the states have access to this um, this matrix. So if you go to the national, uh, ag literacy matrix up at the top, the agclassroom.org, you can get to it. But if you are at your state uh, website, you can also link to the matrix through the website. Okay, I feel like I just gave you a ton of information really quickly, and I can't see if there are any questions. I can't see the Chat, We've had right? a lot of comments about how much they enjoy it and that kind of stuff. Nothing, no, no direct questions though, Michelle. Okay. If you have questions, you can definitely uh, reach out to us. Uh, we're happy to help. Uh, and I don't know, Lynn and Andrea and Alicia, have I forgotten anything important that you're not going to cover? Okay. Then. 
I guess not. And I'm going to turn it over to Lynn, who is going to talk to you a bit about what's new for elementary. Okay. Hi, I'm Lynn Wallen. I'm the elementary education specialist. Um, so I'm going to take a moment to just talk about some new elementary resources that are on the matrix. Um, when Michelle was talking to you about my binder, one of the things that if you um, do create a my binder account, you'll receive a monthly newsletter um, that will point out new resources on the matrix. So I'm going to just talk about a few new elementary resources from 2022-23. Um, and it's not a complete list, but I'll just feature a few here. Um, so cultures, food, and communities around the world, we've had a lesson for grades three through five. We now have a K-2 version. Um, so in this lesson, students are exploring different cultures by looking at what school children eat for lunch around the world. Um, so they'll use these lunch cards to map out where in the world different dishes are eaten. And we also use this um, wonderful, beautiful book called What's for Lunch um, with really nice photographs of um, school lunches from around the world. We also um, are going to explore how the foods get to our lunch trays. Um, so we have these food supply chain cards, um, which the students will, the cards are cut apart and the students try to put them in order. Um, the process from wheat seeds to bread. Um, and we have these supply chain cards for each food that is featured in the book. How did that get in my lunchbox? Um, a new lesson for K2, milk, sugar, science, engineering, ice cream, is um, a lesson which students um, explore the journey of milk from the farm to the freezer. So they learn about a man named Augustus Jackson. He was a former White House chef who engineered a new process for making ice cream using salt in the 1840s. And then students um, will use a recipe called ice cream in a bag and make their own ice cream right in the classroom. Farm Animal Life Cycles is um, a lesson for grades K-2 that recently had a huge update. Um, so this lesson, st students are investigating six major farm animals, so beef cattle, dairy cattle, pig, sheep, chickens, and um, turkeys. They're going to discover um, the needs animals have to survive. Um, they'll explore the life cycle of each farm animal, and then they'll identify the products and byproducts that each farm animal produces. For grades three through five, a new lesson, farmers market finds. Um, here, students are exploring the value of farmers markets to um, the local communities, and then also discover the benefits of locally grown foods. So I love this book on the farm at the market. We use this book and also this really, really great video from Minnesota Agriculture in the Classroom called From the Field to the Farmer's Market. And students are making a list of um, foods that they might be able to purchase at a farmer's market. And then they're starring any foods that they have never eaten before, or never tried before. Um, so they'll choose one of those, research a recipe, and they may compile um, all of the recipes into a class farmer's market recipe book, which they go home and share with their families. And hopefully um, that kind of sparks an interest for families to visit a farmer's market. Um, we also discuss the economic, environmental, and quality benefits of locally grown foods. Um, farming for Energy is a really popular lesson for grades three through five, um, where we identify renewable and non-renewable energy sources, um, and we investigate how farms can produce renewable energy. Um, this lesson was recently updated. Uh, we had um, activities on wind power, and uh, methane digesters, and we now have updated to have a, an activity on solar power. So in this lesson, students will construct a barn out of you know, cardboard or paper, um, and then they will design and build a working wind turbine that will power an LED light. Um, so this is our new kit, what's included in the new kit for um, 
the solar part of this. So they're going to um, build a solar power, solar panel to power a fan for their barn. Um, and then we also investigate how methane digester works, taking livestock waste and creating energy. Um, a new resource, brand new resource that we're really excited about is the Farm and Food Sky Tour. Um, so this is a Google Earth agricultural map of the United States, states which um, identifies the top commodities grown and raised in each state. And we use it to investigate the connections between geography, climate, and the crops and livestock grown and raised in each state. So I think I'm going to try and go out to Google Earth here. Um, and so for every state, we are featuring three real um, farms from that state. Um, so I'm going to go down to Tennessee and show you. Um, for each state, we have an information page where we identify the top agricultural products by um, market value of products sold, and then also commodities by cash receipts. Um, we link to the latest census of agriculture, which is the 2017 census, um, to their state profile. We link to state fact sheets. Um, we feature um, just top commodities, could be specialty crops, um, that are high ranked through the nation. Um, and then we also link to the um, Ag in the Classroom webpage for that state. Um, we, for each state, like I said, we currently have three um, farms that we, you can go and, and see the satellite image of. So I'm gonna take you to this farm in Idaho. Um, called Mill and Camp Cattle. Um, and so there's a description of that. If there's a website, it links there. Um, but then there's also a high quality video where you meet the producers, meet the farm families. Um, they are going to talk about their operations in the video and then also give you some information about the um, crop that they are growing or the livestock that they're raising there. Um, so this, resource is currently being used in um, these three lessons, Growing Our State History for grades three through five, and for middle school and high school, geography and climate for agricultural landscapes. Um, and so in the um, three five lesson, they um, were investigating the influence of agriculture on the history of a, of a state. And this is called a bridge lesson where it's written for a national audience, and then we bridge you out to um, resources that particular to your state. Um, but the students are using in this lesson the Farm and Food Sky Tour to identify those top five commodities um, that are grown or raised in their state. Um, they are mapping out where those crops or livestock um, are grown, and then they're organizing the food that's grown into the five food groups from my plate and considering whether or not they would be able to consume a healthy diet um, without food grown in other parts of the country or the world. Um, and I know I am, whoop. okay, so I'm talking about elementary, but um, I don't think Andrew would mind if I mention this um, geography and climate for agricultural landscapes. Um, for middle school and high school where um, they're using the farm and food sky tour to identify the top commodities of their state and then completing a project of their choice. So they could be um, developing a marketing campaign for those top commodities, maybe creating a state ag map, interviewing um, a marketing expert from the state department of ag um, to discover the impact of what is grown or raised in their state. So those are a few um, new resources for elementary. I'm going to um, stop sharing because Andrea is going to share a little bit about what's new for secondary. All right, thank you, Lynn. Um, I'm gonna take you right to uh, the Ag in the Classroom website to show you a few things. And just 
before I get started, I noticed that there were some questions and you probably saw them in the Q&A, but just so you know, the food and farm sky tour is on the matrix. Um, so if you just search sky tour, you're going to find it right here where you can click on the Google link. So there's just that in case anybody else had that question. But um, as I it was introduced, I am in charge of the secondary uh, resources that we have for teachers. Uh, the first thing I wanted to show you is uh, something that we have in the teacher center. We've had it for about a year now, so it's not brand new, um, but I wanted to share it because it's really valuable for secondary teachers. Um, different from elementary education, secondary teachers are usually looking for very specific subject content. Um, so we have science teachers, social studies teachers, family consumer science, etc. So there's different groups that are looking for specific resources. So what we've done to make the matrix just a little bit more uh, teacher friendly um, is we've made what's called a course topics page. So from the uh, at classroom.org, click on teacher center, and then come to course topics. And from this page, um, hopefully you'll be able to see your subject area. We don't have all of them, but we've worked on quite a few and we should be able to get most of them. So if you teach middle school science, uh, you can come to this block and click on it. And then it takes you um, to a page that you can then find lessons on these specific topic areas. So if you're looking for cells and cell processes, here's your couple lessons. Um, and we won't have lessons on everything, um, but at least it'll help you kind of uh, sort through the lessons to see what uh, fits into your curriculum. Um, so there is middle school science. Um, biology is a big topic, uh, or we have a lot of teachers in biology. Um, so there's those units. Uh, we wanted to create it kind of like a map. When I was teaching in high school, and I imagine most of you are the same, that you have a folder, whether it's on a Google Drive or on your computer that has a folder for every unit that you teach. So we tried to organize these the best we could that you could visualize them that way. So we have environmental science. New um, is that we have aligned these lessons to AP environmental science. So if you teach that, um, these will be aligned right to that. Um, a lot of environmental science also has state uh standards we obviously don't have state standards but you should be able to navigate through so we've got american history geography we've got world geography as well as ap human geography um, this is a big draw for teachers to cover unit five if we have any ap human geography teachers with us today um, and then family and consumer science um, we have lots of lessons that fit into that food education uh, topic so make sure you know about the course topics page. Another thing that I'd like to invite you and encourage you to do is if you participate in any social media groups, like a Facebook group for your specific teachers, I and mean, there's tons and tons of Facebook groups out there for your state, for specific subject areas, uh, please share our resources. That really helps us get these into teachers' hands um, and give them not only the ability to improve agricultural literacy, but also to improve the engagement in their classroom. We definitely feel that when um, these real life topics are used to contextualize uh, classroom content, that it definitely brings a lot to the classroom. So please, please always share our resources. We really appreciate it. Um, it helps us get it into teachers' hands. And social media is a place that we can reach teachers that may never, um, otherwise learn about ag in the classroom or the programs in our states and across the nation. Um, so that's the uh, course topics page. I'm gonna go back to the presentation here and I'm just gonna give you a little bit. There's a couple of lessons that are brand new. Uh, the first one is called the big deal about big ag. And this is a lesson that I'm actually not gonna tell you much about because I have a session later this afternoon about it. So if you teach high school, um, this is a great lesson that's brand new and it answers the questions that we have about the size of farms in the United States. So oftentimes um, we think of a family farm and we think of small versus large um, commercial farms. Sometimes we hear the term factory farms. Uh, this lesson addresses all of those um, issues. We look at things from an economic view as well as uh, different social views. Um, so this is just a plug for my uh, workshop this afternoon to learn about the big deal about big ag. The other lesson 
that is brand new is called Tracing the Agricultural Supply Chain. And I'm actually just gonna go to this lesson. Um, this lesson uses dominoes as an example um, here of helping students understand that between the farm and the consumer, so between the farm and the plate, there's lots and lots of contributing factors that lead to the ability to get food from the farm to the consumer. Um, and we use dominoes to uh, talk about, this might not play here. Anyway, I'm not gonna get that to play, but the dominoes actually fall down as, and to kind of demonstrate um, how that, uh, just to give students a visual that several things have to be in place to get food from the farm to the plate. And um, it explores different things that happen um, that can stop uh, food from being processed or uh, transported or any step in between. Uh, so that's another lesson. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and pass it on to the next one so that we can keep just due to time. But those are the new resources that we have, the new list resources that we have for secondary education. Um, always feel free to reach out to me if you're looking for something specific, if you have questions, um, you can find a link to my email address on the NCAL page, which is linked here. But we'd love to hear from you. We love teacher feedback. Another little plug at the end of every lesson, um, there is this uh, symbol and a link to give us some feedback. We really, really, really appreciate when teachers click on that and send us some information. If you ever find a link that's broken, um, if you wanna tell us how it went in your classroom, if you added something that brought a lot to the lesson, please click on that link and give us as much information as you can because it really helps us to uh, continue creating relevant information for teachers. So with that, I will send it on over to Alicia. Andrea, um, I'm just going to quickly highlight some of the newest resources that we have in this store. Um, the first one is the Ag Badging Field Guide, and there has been a lot of buzz about this field guide. Um, and if you attend Lynn's session later on this afternoon, she'll talk a lot more about it. But um, we have a limited number of field guides available that are for purchase. They can be purchased in a set of 30 for $9.60 plus shipping, or you can buy a case of 125 for $20 um, plus shipping. And like I said, we just have a limited number of those available at this time. And so um, if it's something that you're excited about, we encourage you to hurry and purchase those while you can. And then the next, um, the next item that, oh, sorry, the QR code is just going to take you to the link um, to the item in the store. Um, the next item I just wanted to briefly talk about is the Apple Len use model. Um, so this is a model that's actually been around for a few years, but we recently gave it an update. Um, last fall, Population Education made some um, updates to their apple cutting activity. And um, so we needed to update this large model to reflect the changes. So um, the model is made of a uh, styrofo uh, it's called a sty styrene styrene and um it's two parts so the front part is um an apple and you pull off different pieces of the apple to reveal the image underneath and um so anyway that's just another one of our new updates that we've made in the store um the next kit is the farm profile cards. And this is going to um, go along with the lesson, the big deal about Big Ag. And Andrea will be talking about this lesson a little bit later this afternoon. Um, as she was developing the lesson, she reached out to me and she said, there is just going to be a lot of cutting um, and we wanna give teachers the opportunity to purchase a kit. So um, to complete the activity in the lesson, each group of students needs a set of these 21 cards. And um, so this particular kit um, has six sets of cards. So it's a total of 126 cards in the kit. And um, anyway, so it goes, it goes with the lesson 
um, the big deal about big ag. And those cards are going to be on, they're a card stock and it has a glossy, a pretty glossy finish. And so they'll last for years in your classroom. And then the next one, sorry, I'm just going to fly through these real quick. Um, so the next thing is the livestock flow chart. And this is a really fun information sheet. Um, the lesson Lynn briefly touched on um, doing an update was the farm animals. Lynn, will you remind me the name of the lesson plan? Sorry. That the livestock flow chart goes with. It's called Farm Animal Life Cycles. Thank you. Farm Animal Life Cycles. And there's actually a printable version of the flow chart linked in that lesson. And um, in the store, we have a version that you can purchase. It's a classroom set of 30 flow charts and the flow charts are 30 inches wide by eight inches tall. And you can fold it up so that you're only revealing a portion of the flow chart at a time. And um, like I mentioned, this is also available to um, just download directly. So the farm profile cards, the livestock flow chart, those items are, um, those items can be downloaded directly from the lesson plan so that you can print your own, or you can um, go to the store and, and purchase our pre-printed version for you. So our goal in this store is to just make your life a little bit easier, to save you some time so that you don't have to go out and try to gather all of these resources on your own, but everything is available for you to purchase or to print on your own if you would rather do it that way. Okay, and then the next item is um, just source search. We've done an update to one of our, this is one of our best selling kits and um, rightfully so it should be. It's one of our most favorite activities. We have a lesson plan that uses this activity for every grade level. We use it in every workshop we go to. We love source search. And so what we've done is we've just made a more compact package for this. So um, we've gotten some feedback from teachers that there's a lot of cutting that takes place sometimes when our kits are purchased. And so you no longer have to purchase out or you no longer have to cut out the different items. They're just on an individual card. So this just comes in a nice little um, concise package. And um, then if you, <clears throat> Michelle mentioned that, well, it's been mentioned by every, every one of our members, but um, so if you have the source search lesson plan saved in your binder, as we do some updates to that lesson, your binder will automatically be updated with the newest version of source search. <clears throat> and so watch in the coming weeks as we do a little bit of tweaking and updating to some of the other activities we have in the source search lessons. And then our next activity or our next kit is the water savers game. And um, so the water savers is a board game developed for students grades six to 12. It's a Europe European style cooperative game where um, you are a whole bunch of different heroes that have to work together to defeat the villains. And so the game introduces environmental issues and sustainable farming practices. And it's linked to five different lessons on the curriculum matrix. And so this one is fun. Um, we know people love games in the classroom. And again, this is something that you can download and print on your own, or you can just purchase a game that's ready to go. And um, then the last kit that I just wanna briefly talk about is um, we made a smaller version of their fruit and vegetable posters. So we got feedback and please send us feedback. We love feedback. Like Andrea said, we love feedback. And so this poster set came about because um, we got a request that sometimes the 42 inch by 42 inch posters were just too big and people weren't able to fit them in their classrooms. And so we made a smaller version of that. And um, so this is just a 30 by 30 poster set. You get two posters and their fruit and vegetable cards that go along with it. And um, when, when you click on the, um, when you go to one of the items in the store, we always link back to the lesson plans that are associated with that resource. 
um, on the curriculum matrix. So you'll always be able to find the lesson that it's associated with um, for further instructions, background information, and all of the information that you need will be linked back to um, the matrix. And we have some other new kits in the store, but those were just the few that I wanted to talk about. And we just wanted to say thank you for joining us on this conference. Thank you for being great teachers. And thank you for um, everything that you do. We wanted to give you a coupon code. So um, you can use this the next time you visit the store. And that's all I have. Well, thank you. Thank all of you. Michelle, did you want to finish up with something? I didn't mean to jump in. Oh, you're fine, um, Kevin. Just thank you so much for uh, having us this morning. We appreciate the opportunity to um, share the resources that we have with teachers and uh, all those folks across the, the states in, that are <laughs> interested in um, promoting agriculture literacy and in improving engagement in their classrooms. Um, as as we all, I think we've all mentioned it, but if you have any questions at all, um, please feel free to reach out to us. We're all very accessible. Uh, my information is on the website, as is everyone else's. So we would love to answer any questions that you have, or um, yeah, help out in awesome. any way. Well, thank you to uh, Michelle, Alicia, Andrea, Lynn, all the whole NCAL team for all of your hard work. Alicia, I am going to put you on the spot. How how long has the store been around? How many years? Oh, gosh, I would say probably at least, probably 18. And it's what I thought. So um, Alicia did, she did not offer a money back guarantee if you, uh, if your cards <laughs> do get destroyed. Uh, uh, they can be destroyed. You just uh, be careful with those things. But uh, thank you to the to the NCAL team. A big shout out to them. Make sure that you uh, check the National Ag in the Classroom website agclassroom.org and click on virtual national conference. The agenda is there and uh, you will hear, you'll have a chance to hear, uh, you'll have a chance to hear uh, ag badging with Lynn. Uh, Lynn will be talking about ag badging at three o'clock Eastern on the elementary side. And Andrea will be talking about uh, the big deal about big ag at three o'clock on the secondary side. With that, we're going to sign off for now. Uh, we will stop the recording. Thank you for joining us. Our next session is our 